We've explored the definition of sitting, how lying down is a form of sitting, but bike riding would not be a form of sitting. We've looked at how common sitting is. We've seen the evidence for the risk and mortality when you exceed eight hours of sitting. We've looked at key enzymes that are affected by sitting and how that contributes to the health risk. But what exactly can you do about it? We're in a sedentary society. Is it possible to break out of that mold and to limit your total sitting to not more than eight hours? It most certainly is. And we'll take a look at some tips that have worked for me and thousands of other patients. It's pretty simple. Buy a standing desk and use it. It's simple in theory, but in practice, it can be more challenging. I would say that 90% of the patients I see own a standing desk and about an 89% of the patients I see don't use it. So what's happened is people have at one point decided it was a good idea. They uh, bought the standing desk and uh, installed it and thought this is a great idea. And they looked at the standing desk as they went back to sitting by their computer and working, and they occasionally thought, well, I should stand. And in the first couple of weeks, they probably stood a couple of times. And then next couple of weeks, they probably didn't stand at all. And then they come in to see me months later and they're not standing at all. And they are still report having a standing desk. The problem is that the standing remained a act of will. So their default remained sitting, and it would take a decision and effort to stand. And the motivation to stand uh, was not always present, and it was much easier to sit. So sitting was what ended up being the long-term default outcome. Now, what we can learn from the concept of choice architecture, popularized in the book Nudge, is that to make a habit of anything, you need to make it your default. You need to make, you decide beforehand, this is the right thing to do. Then you arrange your environment so it's also the easiest thing to do. So what I personally do is I have a standing desk in my kitchen where I work. I have a standing desk in my bedroom when I work. I have a standing desk at work. For me to be standing at home at, or at work, I have to do no thinking at all. I My furniture is all set up so that I will default to standing. On the other hand, if I want to sit, I actually have to expend some effort. So I have to lower the adjustable desk in my dining room to make it a sitting position. I have to pull in a chair from another clinic room to sit at my job at work. There is more effort for me to sit than to stand. Standing is the default. It's nothing I have to think about. I don't have to come in to work and think about the study on standing and, the, and, and make a choice to stand every time I uh, start a new day, but I just automatically am there. So my recommendation is not only buying the standing desk, but making your default work and home living situation such that you don't have to think about standing. It is the automatic default. Now, many people will be concerned that they're not going to be able to stand that much. Um, and I'll tell you that that is a true statement. It is not easy to stand in the beginning. I have found that my legs were sore Initially, my back might have been a little sore initially. Now I have no pain or discomfort at all. I can't tell you that a lifetime of sitting is going to, it's going to be easy to just automatically be standing all the time. It takes a little bit of time, but during that time, what, what's happening is your core muscle strength is improving. And you're going to be able to adapt to, with a stronger core and a stronger leg muscles, to support you while standing. And ironically, low back pain, which is a lot of people's concern when they're standing, is actually improved with standing. When we sit, our low backs take on all of the weight of the upper body. When we stand, we're able to share the weight from the upper body 
with our quadriceps and hamstrings and the rest of our leg muscles, which allows us to be better supported and relieves any strain on the back. So while I'll say that definitely there could be a transition period, this transition where you might feel that it's hard to stand is going to resolve and the outcome will be you have a stronger core, less back pain and stronger leg muscles.